all is well, but we are a tad concerned here, Michael. And, you know, our Cowboys suffered a, a, a bad loss against the Jags. They haven't been playing their best football. How worried do you think we should be right now here in Dallas? Well, I mean, look, I, I think it, it, these seasons, there's a lot of ebb and flow to them that go. I, I think you should be concerned, especially about the health of the team, right? I mean, we saw that the secondary, you know, against Jacksonville, they lost guys that came, excuse me, against Indianapolis. And then the Houston game, you know, you had a bunch of injuries. And I, I think, you know, and then last week you let a team have 503 yards. So I, I think you have to be concerned about the trend that's going on, you know, and you know, the fact that you've turned the ball over, the defense has turned it over 10, time, uh, 10 times in the last three weeks. The offense has given it back six. So, you know, you you got to be worried about how we're playing complementary football, how we're handling the situations, and how are we best winning the game. And what about when it comes to when it comes to uh, the 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 offense right now, and and the way you the way you see Kellen Moore uh, because they're scoring points, but then they they can't close out a game, and so it feels like there's times where Kellen Moore you're like wow you're impressed, and then there's other times where it's like are you are you helping out your players? Are you helping out your quarterback? Yeah, I mean, I think that's always that's been probably the biggest disappointment of the National Football League this year is how teams you know, don't figure out that the clock is their opponent as opposed to the opponent. You know, I mean, when you throw them third and ten, a deep ball down the field, and you know that you give them an extra timeout, you're really doing them a favor, you know. And so you've got to be you got to be able to run the right plays at the right time, anticipate what they're going to be in, and the players have to execute. I mean, look, the, the mark of a great team is they close game out. When, when the other team knows you're going to run the ball and you can run it, you're a great team. When the other team knows you have to throw it and you can throw it, you're a great team. And the same thing on defense. So until you get to that point, it's it's really challenging. And I think that, you know, the Green Bay game and this last week, kind of the, there, there were moments where the Cowboys didn't do those things. Michael, you and I lived the Philadelphia experience together. It's still home area for you. The Eagles, when you watch them on tape and study them, their best, their strength, and then the thing that you could absolutely take advantage of them of? Well, I think their strength is their offensive line, without a doubt, Brian. I mean, that's the key to their ability to be versatile, right? So when they started this Jalen Hurts experiment, they weren't a six-back team. And when I call it a six-back team, meaning the quarterback's part of the run game, yeah. okay? Not in a drop, not in a pass. Okay, he's going to take off because he's scrambling. I'm talking about calling runs for the quarterback. And so they, this evolution that got them there was because they built an offense around Hurts. And a lot of that is because of the strength of their offensive line. And the, the players that they have around their offensive line are really good yards after the catch. And I think they've done a great job in coaching development and player development of having the players match the system and the coaches being divergent in thought to create ways to utilize their skill set the best. I think the weakness of the team is if you block them up front, you can throw the football on them. There's no doubt. I think if you can block them, you can throw it. I, I think that it's a challenge to block them, but I think you can do that. I think they've improved their pass rush over the last month of the season. They've gotten more pressure, but they don't create a lot of turnovers. I mean, the last three weeks, they've only created two turnovers that. And you can throw the football on them if you understand how to do it. The Packers did it. You know, even though the, the Packers gave up 363 yards rushing in that game. Yeah. But I can throw the ball on them. And I think if you make them play a close game, you know, they had a close game against the Colts, right? They had a close game against the Cardinals. But for the most part, they haven't had very many close games. So how they handle the fourth quarter is going to be critical. Michael, this this when I, when I was watching the Eagles play, I just I couldn't figure out how to slow them down. And do you feel like, though, with you know, with likely with Hurts dealing with this AC joint problem that he's got, it, are they going to be somewhat similar offensively with uh, with Gardner Minshew? Do they continue on that path, or how different do you see the Eagles being on offense? Well, I mean, look, Hurts has got 156 carries on the year already, right? And he's played in 14 games, so there's no way they're, they're they can't they'll run a little bit of their six back attack. But it's really it's going to be more of an RPO attack now, right? Right. And they're going to and Minshew can throw the ball better. They'll be they'll go back to a rhythm passing game, right? They'll go back to a, more of a rhythm passing game, get the ball out, and try to expose a Cowboys secondary that hasn't played well. You know, stay away from digs, attack the corners, 
And, and if we can block them up front, we're going to make a lot of plays on them and let Minshew make the right decisions and then still run the ball. When Hurts is the quarterback, you have to set the defense outside it. So what that means is you have to have edges on both sides because he can bounce it on either direction. And if you don't set the, 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 the defense outside in and say, okay, try to run the ball inside on us. The teams that have played Philly the best, like Tampa last year in a playoff game, mm-hmm. they had two big inside guys and they set the defense from outside in. That gives them problems. And so you've got to be able to force him into throwing the football, but not in a play-action pass way. So when they played Tennessee, they threw it early in the game off play-action. They got a 24-21-7 lead. When they played the Giants the next week, they threw it off play-action early, got a 24-7 lead. Now he can keep running play-action. But if you build a lead on him and he has to run drop back, now Hurts all of a sudden becomes a different player. So that, to me, is how you attack him. Michael, when you uh, with the Cowboys, I, I, we watched them play defensively. You mentioned all the injuries but the pass rush has been lacking. They've been getting with four-man pressure and stuff. Have teams figured out that we're not going to let Dallas rush the passer on us anymore? Is it right. the quick game, the screen game? Is that is that what teams are just going to do now to him? Well, you have to. And I, I think now because he stood everybody up, you know, remember the offensive line wants to block the four biggest guys, right? They want right. to block the four big biggest Big on guys. big, yeah. Big on big. So what they what they do is now they just count. Eleven's a down guy no matter what. No matter where he lines up, he's a down guy. Because you're not going to let some back. They want a back to block him. So, you, you know, the protections kind of adapt to what the Cowboys are doing. And so you, you and then they get the ball out quicker. And then they know they can't really hold on in coverage. I mean, they had a chance to win that Jacksonville game. They didn't put enough pressure on, on Lawrence. And you knew where the ball was going. Right. You kind of knew where it was. So, yeah, I mean, it's an evolution. And the Cowboys will struggle to rush against a really good offensive line of Philadelphia. Michael, uh, you always – I learned something new about the middle the middle eight. And for those that are new to, you know, listening to you and stuff on our station, explain what you're talking about the middle eight of a game. So the middle eight is probably the most critical aspect of a football game. All right, so football is much like chess. And if you talk – if you study chess, the person who has the white pieces means he starts the game or she starts the game first, typically will either win that chess match against the grandmaster or they will get a draw because the first move really makes a difference. In football, starting the ball, starting with the ball has no relevance because who controls the middle eight ends up with, the, with basically with the control of the game. So it's the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. So what you want to do is you want to have the ball to end the half, and you want to get the ball to start the half. So if you're, if you're Philadelphia and you're playing in Dallas and everybody's been in their seats all day long, they've been drinking beer, they're ready to go, everybody's ready to watch. The, the crowd is the loudest it's ever going to be at kickoff. Right. At the, at, they're all taking a leak. They're all in the bathroom. They're buying more pretzels, getting more beer. The, the stadium's half empty. Now you get the ball, you can play with a less crowd noise. Remember, the number one advantage the offense has in football is they know the snap count. And when, you get, when, you, when your home crowd takes away the snap count, all of a sudden it's an equal footing. So in, like in chess, when you can get the white pieces by controlling the middle eight, you should win the game. So you could make up a 10-point lead. Say you're behind by 10. You score at the end of the half to go by three. Now you score again, you catch it up. Right. If you... You have a lead, you score at the end of the half and score to start the half, all of a sudden now the game's a whole different game. So that's the key to football is control in the middle eight. And, and some of these games, like the Cowboy game last week, I mean, those two, that, that performance by both teams at the end of the half was as bad a middle eight management as you could possibly have. Wow. So Michael Lombardi is deferring basically every every coin toss when it's up to if it's up to you you want the ball to start the second half ten out of ten. Yeah, uh, no, no question, no question. You want it to start there, and, and what you want to do, which is what the Cowboys and my man Kellen Moore, who's in the basement in Des Moines, just calling plays like he's playing Madden. He pays no attention to the middle eight. He could care less about the middle eight. You know, he sits there. He gets the ball to start the drive. You know, now when they get the ball back from the from the the Jaguars, 
you know, he comes out and, and I'll give it to you. I'm looking at the play by play. I'll give it to you. Like this is a, this is as bad as it gets. He gets the ball with one thirty one to go in the half. Now, Jacksonville, which you can't deny Doug Peterson, he could care less about the middle eight too. He starts out his drive with an incomplete pass. Mm. Then he gets the ball start. Then he throws a short pass inbounds, lets the clock run, but he snaps it way too early. And then he throws another incomplete. Cowboys don't even have to use a timeout. They get the ball back with one with, with 131 to go in the game, right? And they throw a pass that goes out of bounds. Then they throw a pass inbounds that lets the clock, but they, they don't. And then they Jacksonville calls timeout, and now they get a third and one, and they got a punt. Where you got to start the drive, you got to get that clock running. People panic in the middle eight. They think, oh no, we got to get plays. No, you got to get the clock running. You got to get it going. Let the clock work for you. And that was. And then the Jacksonville gets the ball back with 41 seconds left to go, and they couldn't do anything with it. And they couldn't get the point. And couldn't get. And they should have gotten points. Yeah. Michael Lombardi with us here on 105.3 The Fan. You know, th- there's a lot of talk about Dak and the interceptions right now. Since week 10, he leads the league in interceptions, and he's being a lot more aggressive downfield. Where are you at right now with Dak and his level of play? I mean, this, we, this is one of my pet peeves in football. Like, grade the interceptions. That was Dak's fault that C.D. Lamb popped the ball up in the air? Yeah. Noah Brown, I mean, yeah. All, yeah. Like, what, what, what? You don't want him to throw that ball there? I mean, seriously, you don't want him to throw that? Oh, because he you, knew? No, we said the same thing in the postgame. Brian yeah. and I were defending him for three hours. Yeah. I mean, it's a joke. Like, they, you know, like, look, does he have to protect? Like, the first interception I thought was horrendous. You know, I didn't think that's on him. He can't make that mistake. He's too experienced. But, you know, C.D. Lamb can't pop the ball up in the air. Like, it's unfair for quarterbacks to pay such a price on an interception that's not his fault. When it's his fault, we'll give him the blame. Hey Michael, uh, I I was listening to uh, I was listening to you the other day, like I always do, and you were talking about you actually went after Coach Belichick and and the Patriots for the hiring of their offensive coordinators. And I I I, I, <laughs> I never mean coordinators. I, hey, listen, I appreciate you going because, like I say, there's a lot of guys in the media and gals in the media that won't go after people. But that that's a terrible situation that's going on in New England right now, right? That quarterback's gotten oh. worse, haven't they, with that with those two guys? Yeah, if he didn't have a good season last year, you would say he's a blown pick. But you know he did. Yeah. And I think and I love Bill to death. I, I mean he's I love him like a brother. And I, I only say that because if I'm gonna be a commentator, I have to be fair about what I say. And I don't want his legacy to get penalized for what's happening on the field. Now, look, I can't defend Jacoby Myers, right? Yeah. I mean, that was went rogue and made that play. But I, I can say that their offense, you know, which is really, you know, which can't throw the football, you know, they, they don't understand how to throw it. They don't really run it very well on an average. They're really bad. You know, one of the ways you evaluate football teams in terms of their, their ability to – to create plays for, to help the players is in on third down and in the red zone. Yeah, the Patriots twenty ninth in third down and they're thirty second in red zone. I mean, and so like that that's a problem. And I think part of it too is the coaches have to be able to convince the players that they can handle it. Michael, uh, before we let you out of here, the daily coach is something that you have founded, and I'm curious: is there a coach right now that you think is doing the job very well? Maybe one that's not getting uh, the credit that uh, that some like a Nick Sirianni is getting right now. I mean, I think Arthur Smith has done an incredible job with Atlanta. I mean, I think Mike Vrabel's done an incredible job with Tennessee. You know, you put you let Matt Lafleur coach Tennessee for a couple of weeks, see how that works out for him, right? I mean, yeah. like serious. I mean, Tennessee is. They're seven and seven. They have no offensive weapons. I mean, I think it's really been a good job. I think the Cincinnati Bengals. I think Lou Amaromo, the defense coordinator, has done a great job. I think the Zach Taylor. I think he's not a very good game manager. But think about this. I think one of the fallacies of the NFL this year has been we've been really bad at protecting quarterbacks. You know, once once we, I think once Gardner Minshew starts. And then I think if, depending on who starts in Arizona, that'll be the 57th new starter in, at quarterback of the season, mm. which the guys are getting hurt way too much. If Minshew starts for the Eagles, who, who do you think wins between the Cowboys and Eagles this Saturday? I think it'll be a really close game. I think it'll be a really close game because I, I, I worry that Dallas takes a sigh of relief and says, oh, we're not playing against Hurts, yeah. you know? Yeah. This Eagles team is really good. They're good. 
and they're going to have to play their best to win. And Minshew's really good. Look at I don't understand how Minshew's a backup quarterback. Some of the guys that are starting in the National Football League, are you kidding me? I mean, this guy's really good. I mean, he I've seen him play at Jacksonville. We've had nobody around him. You what? know, I mean, he's played better than Matt Ryan played in games. He's played better than Davis Mills played. He's played better than Mariota's played. I mean, the Eagles get him for a, like a nothing. Yeah. And, and he's a good player. I mean, he's played well in games, and when you watch him, he can make all the throws. Now, I don't think he's a guy that can play 16 games. I think his size does become a detriment to him. But, I mean, when you look at the guy's career and you break him down, he's had 30, he's had 22 career starts, you know, and, and he's played really well. And he's, he's thrown the ball down the field. He's made plays. He's protected the football. I think he's pretty good. He's, I mean, think about this, guys. He's got 41 touchdowns in 22 career starts. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Real quick, too, one more, just a real quick answer about what's going on with San Francisco and, and Purdy out there. I mean, it's the perfect marriage of player skill set meeting the system skill. Yeah. You know, develop the skills with the player. It's, it's Bill Walsh's theory of quarterbacking, and that's what they're doing well. Michael, this has been a treat for us, man. It, it's been great insight. Really appreciated getting to talk with you. I know for Brian, it's always fun. Uh, we enjoyed it. Enjoy the games this weekend, and have a Merry Christmas, sir. Same to you. Have Merry Christmas. Thanks, everybody.